people. Uh, once again, thank you very much. Good afternoon to you all. Um, thank you for um, making up the space for these uh, webinars. This is webinar number nine. So um, we've been doing this for almost two months now, um, over two months now. And um, well, just some general information. We have already planned the two uh, sessions for July and we are just like confirming sessions for August as well. Um, so the idea is to continue doing these webinars until August when we are gonna have our um, main conference is are gonna be, uh, this is gonna be our 55th annual conference. And in that same line of thought, I would like you to uh, please visit the website, check there all the information related to the special uh, interest groups, to the call for proposals, to um, the webinars, uh, it, the information is already there. Um, if you want to also check out the previous webinars, uh, we have the videos there, so please, uh, feel free to go there, visit it. Uh, there is no problem if you want to write emails to us. There is no problem, so please do it. All right. So, um, well, I guess we already just like uh, make uh, some more seconds for people to to get in. With no further um, waiting on and um, more people, we're going to start up with the presentation of uh, today's presenter. Uh, we have the great pleasure to have Monica Rodriguez Bonses. She's a doctor. Uh, Monica holds a PhD in regional and economic integration and development in the area of education with emphasis in curriculum development and bilingual education. She also holds um, a master's in applied linguistics and a bachelor in Spanish and languages. Monica was a, sc a school teacher in the USA where she was named the teacher of the year. Monica has also been teaching in both graduate and undergrad grad programs. She has been a department chair, academic dean, research director, and also an international academic consultant. She has done recognized research on autonomy, culture, bilingual education, and professional development. Part of this experience can be uh, read in some publications. And also Monica is currently a research tutor and head of academic consultancy for Pearson. Today, she's going to talk about uh, preparing for the future of skills. And um, the, the abstract of her presentation is uh, a student entering formal education today will be making Bañera. decisions about his or her career Maybe. by the year 2030. Much of the current conversation about the future of work revolves around fears of technology making workers obsolete. But which skills do we truly need to develop succeed in the future? What tools can we use to facilitate teaching and learning? Come to this conference and let us explore what the future of the skills has for us. The future may look brighter than what we think. Okay, so thank you once again, Monica. Uh, thank you. This is your house. <laughs> so it's, it's always a pleasure to have you around. Um, thank you very much for having accepted this invitation. And um, just like a same regular recommendations for our attendees, uh, please have your micro microphones and cameras off. If you have any questions, please write them down in the chat. At the end of the session, at the end of the presentation, I am going to ask, I'm going to address those questions to Monica. And uh, please interact with her in the times when she asks you to, um, to do so. Uh, thank you, Monica. The floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jair, Jairo, Miriam, Sita, Carlo, and all the Asocopi board for this invitation. And of course, thank you to the teachers who have made some time today to join us for this conference. This is not possible without you guys uh, being here today. So thank you. Thank you so much to everybody. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, can you please confirm if you see my screen? Do you see my screen, guys? We do, uh, but if you could enlarge it, that would be better. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can see. Okay. Okay. Is that, that is okay? perfect. Yep, that okay. is perfect. Fantastic. 
fantastic. Let me check. I can see here my control. Let me see. Perfect. Uh, I think Jair, I'm going to need you to help me with, I don't see the chat in here. Let me see. Uh, you have to look for the control where you stop sharing. There are going to be other controls and it is, it, the chat is there also. You mean like clicking stop share? No, 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 no. Go uh -huh. over that slide and, and the, the rest of the controls are going to merge. Okay, no problem. Let's just start and then I ask people just to open microphone or we can see with Jair as we planned before, okay? So that we All make right. the most of the time. Sure. All right, so thank you guys for being here. Uh, as I was saying, today we'll be talking about preparing for future skills. As uh, Jair was saying, basically today the discussion is about uh, what makes us employable in the future. Uh, to begin uh, this conversation, Conversation or this webinar, I would like you to think of the following. When you were little ones, what did you want to be when you grew up? Or how do you imagine the life of the children and teens in your family by the year 2030? Please, if you want to share some of your ideas, go ahead. Okay, do you have any ideas there, Jair? Yes, I guess um, people already started. Uh, an English professor, Edilberto, said, uh, I wanted to be a doctor, Miguel Ro Angel Roberto and Jair Ayala. Um, Carlo Granado wanted to be a policeman. So we're going to take notes of that. <laughs> Uh, Fabian okay. Garcia says that he wanted to be an architect. Um, Juan Carlos Gordillo said that he wanted to be uh, like the Sonics. Uh, <laughs> Camila Perez says that she wanted to be a diplomat. Who did wanted to be uh, a UPTC teacher. So actually, she just like made her dream come true. Santiago wow. Martinez says that he wanted to be a truck driver. Um, Usuario wanted to be to travel the whole world and to speak many languages. Uh, Judith Albarracín said that she wanted to be a singer and uh, Sandra Garcia says that she wanted to be a pilot. Nora okay. Choperene said that she wanted to travel around the world being a diplomat. Like right. Star Wars will be here, okay? Uh, <laughs> my children would like to travel to the moon. All right, that is what uh, Johnny Metrio said. Um, Andrea Jimenez says that she wanted to be a vet. Okay, so as you can see, many of us have many ideas, many, many plans when we're little ones. And, and, and actually, maybe some of us consider the life of our teens and our children a little bit different for the following 10 years. And why do I start asking this question? Just to reflect that maybe, let me just move this just to consider that what we have been thinking of what we wanted to have or what we wanted to do has changed like in the past maybe not many of you thought of being bloggers or app developers or uh, maybe drone operators and those are some jobs that some children or some teenagers are considered nowadays you know so it's like like how we perceive life differently and how you know time passes and changes and 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 yeah, like the life environment give us different options and different perceptions about what we want to be and what we really are. So it's nice for the ones who <laughs> make their dreams true or what they wanted to be like the teacher at UPTC, congratulations. <laughs> so that is fantastic. But you know what happened? The reality is that a recent research says that uh, today's children's is gonna, future is gonna change a lot and especially because the prospect of life has changed and it's been said that the children, the child or children who are living 100 years are already born, which means that the expectancy of life, you know, has increased and of course the working life too. What does it mean? That in the future, those children like my little one who's Tomas and he's actually 
his birthday was this week. He's now six years old. <laughs> uh, maybe he will have many jobs in the following years, and his expectancy of life could be 100 years. So can you believe that? Mm, different to maybe what we lived or maybe our parents and maybe the teenagers and children in our family. So the point is that if we reflect on this, that today's school children face the prospect of working until they are 100, that maybe what we want to be is different, it shows or it definitely explains that we need to be prepared for what is next in the future, all right? Thinking of employability and, um, yeah, employability. So some of the information like this one's taken from the UNESCO say that, uh, for example, 65% of today's 12 years old will do jobs that don't yet exist or that millennials will have an average 12 to 14 jobs over the course of their careers. So it, it gives us like a different landscape, no? Because again, I don't know the generations in this webinar today, maybe some of us have been in one job for many years, but what is true is that, look, millennials, maybe 12, 14 jobs, and our children, like my little Thomas, they will do jobs that don't exist yet. So times are definitely changing, and um, if we look, for example, what uh, the news say, or uh, some information that we may get from even from media, although we shouldn't believe that everything that is on media, you know that. But this is some information that we get, says, for example, that robots will take our jobs. Mm, maybe some people believe this, and some people say, oh yes, this is true, now I see robots everywhere and they're taking our jobs. Maybe for some people, this is not possible, or maybe for some people, only a few jobs. That's the information where we are getting. But uh, the reality is that also we have faced these situations in the past when we say that jobs or robots will take our jobs. Uh, can you think of any situation in the past in which we say, oh, our jobs will be taken or a situation in which technology uh, changed the way of doing or performing a job? Can you think about it, guys? And please uh, write in your chat or if someone wants to open the microphone, that would be okay. Yes. Okay. What's your name, please? Go ahead. Hey, Javier. Okay, Javier, please. Sorry, I'm not moving anything because I tried and I messed up. Don't so worry. we're working with Javier. <laughs> okay, go ahead, please. Well, I think they didn't know that. I didn't think that uh, in this moment we are using virtual classes <laughs> per day. Uh, this is not possible. Correct. That is a nice example, and uh, this is a nice example, especially because it's a change that affected our lives, no? How the computers or how education was going to be mediated, no? And I know that Carolina Rodriguez was last week talking about this topic. So, yeah, we, we have been there. Um, and today we're going to see what's going to happen with teachers. So maybe how classes were going to be delivered, no? Not the classroom, how the classroom was going to change, no? like going face-to-face -face interaction or being in a, in a building and now meeting uh, using a computer. Great. Uh, Jair, do we have any example in the chat? Here. Uh, yeah, I'm reading. It Could says you read robots. one, please? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Juan Carlos Gordillo says that robots are calling you all the time to sell you anything, not real salesmen. Uh, Camila Perez says that hand sewing would be replaced by machines, and back in the days, those were people. Those people sewing would be replaced by that machine. Uh, tellers says Judi uh, Daleida Lisa. Arisa says that tellers. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Any other so, comment? Yeah. So that is great because it shows how different jobs have those examples of how those jobs change on the way they were performed. That is exactly the example that I have in here. Any ideas of what I'm showing there? What do you think they are doing? Uh, open your microphone if you want, please. Any volunteer? What do you think they are doing there? No? Camila Perez says that they are cleaning windows. Okay, they are cleaning windows. Any other interpretation of this picture? I love this, no? Because this is how we understand reality. So for me, that was to cleaning windows. Okay, what was that? 
In early 1900s, factories and New Yorks employed someone as a knocker upper to wake up workers so that they were not late for work. <laughs> Can you believe it? So that's what we're doing. And later that was changed for certain technology. What do they use later to wake up? What do you think it was? Instead of someone knocking. Any ideas? Please write it in the chat. Maybe alarm clock? Yes. The alarm yes. clocks. Yes. Excellent. That is it. All right. So it was changed. The point right now is everything that, uh, that you mentioned. We have been in these situations before, like how jobs are, how jobs are performed, what, how the job was done, how it has evolved, how it has changed, what has changed, and the example that today you gave are excellent, beautiful, great. Um, but you know what? What is behind all of this talk is not, the point here is not that robots are going to, to, to replace humans, because as you can see, we always face this situation. Someone else or something else will be performing jobs. It's exactly what do we need to be employable in the future? So if times have changed, should be worried? If those are the stats, the stats should be worried, and that's the reflection. So how do you get a job that doesn't exist yet, if that is the reality for our 12 years old? The answer is, think of the skills, what we need, all right? And, um, and someone was talking, oh, yeah, talking about the, the teachers, no? Maybe someone was, oh, no, uh, teachers will be replaced. But what the reality, this COVID reality is showing is that teachers are truly important to offer quality education. Do you see the conception, how it has been changing? So it's what we need. We need the skill set. So let us move on. If we have faced those situations, if what we thought we were, were little ones, what we have been facing with our teenagers and kids in our families, if we think of what has been happening in recent years, if we consider that everything is changing, what will make us employable in 2030? And I'm not talking about 40 years. I'm just talking about 10 years from now, all right? So let us think about it. Um, we did, um, by, me, by we I mean in person and Nesta College and Martin College, we did a research that is called the Future of Skills Employment in 2030. If you search that, uh, the Future of Skills Employment in 2030, in person and Nesta College, you are going to find that uh, the research we watched done in the US and UK identify key skills that employers will be looking for, what you know, companies, employers are looking in people for hiring them. These are some of the skills that they want to see. Okay. Look at them. Do they look familiar to you? You see? Where do you find that research? Future of skills, person.com or just Google future of skills. Okay. You see the skills, most of the skills that they mentioned? Okay, so if we are thinking, and someone mentioned the example of the teacher, if you get into that website, you are going to be able, we're not going to do it first because of time, and second, because uh, of navigating, it would take also more time, okay? But I invite you to visit. So when you visit the site, you are going to search any type of job. Like for example, in this case, I, I, I did the research for teachers. And I imagine that uh, this person, Monica, located in the US, she is a foreign language and leadership teacher, all right? Uh, in uh, 2030, she will be 43 years old, okay? And when we search what the skills she would need to be employable in 2030, these are the skills that the research says or the program said that she would need learning strategies, instructing, and active listening. And look, the future is bright for her because according to this, there are 71.4 chance of growth by 2030. So we need to be okay. Teachers will be needed in the future, okay? Uh, it's not one of those jobs that we say, oh no, it's one of the jobs that is going to disappear. On the contrary, it's one of the jobs that is going to grow, okay, by the year 2030. Uh, when you visit the site, you're going to be able to compare with other professions. So this is kind of nice, kind of cool, because you can see um, administrators, accountants, different type of jobs to see what the landscape is for the, by the year 2030. All right. 
So this is the future for teachers. It says that is bright, that is okay, 71% of chances. But how about, for example, drivers, a van driver? You see, in this case, to be employable in 2030, different skills, all right? And the chances are a little bit lower than teachers. In this case, it's a 22.8%, okay, of growth by 2030. Again, you can compare results, and again, you can change the job titles, all right? So, what makes us employable? It is exactly to develop some skills. Look at the list of skills. Do they look familiar to you? Do those skills remind you of any set of other skills that you have been talking about in education? If you have any idea, please write in the chat. Okay, Jay. 21st, any, tw 21st yes, century mm -hmm. skills, Camilo, Carlo Granado says uh, 21st century skills. Uh, who did yes. have seen many of them? Uh, yes. 21st century skills. Yes, Carlo, yes, who did. 21st century skills. Uh, if you analyze, they are very related to 21st century skills. And you remember the four C's of the 21st century skills? Please write in the chat. Remember, I'm not teaching here anything. It's, this is a webinar, so we just interact. Carlo Grenell writes, um, communicating, critical thinking. Sandra Patricia writes, creativity. Carlo Grenell's uh, citizenship. Mariana Medina, creativity. Okay, we are missing There's one. one. Missing. <laughs> uh -huh, there is one missing. Who, found, who finds that? <laughs> okay, Cusan Restrepo says cooperation and collaboration. Oh, okay. Almost, not exactly. <laughs> collaboration, instructional Critical design, thinking. communication, collaboration, technology literacy, cooperative work, cultural awareness. Yeah, all, all, everything that you mentioned is related to these four C's. Critical thinking, Autonomy, yes. collaboration, and communication. Okay, of yep. course, this is in a broad sense, but, in, you know, again, when you refer to this, we are going to find everything listed here and everything that is in the chat, okay? So we are okay with this. So that's the most important. No matter how we name it, we have been talking about this for a long time. Uh, what I want to say is that this is not new, <laughs> all right? We have been talking about developing those skills. The point is that right now we are being a little bit more aware that we are moving, you know, like previous in the past, we were so much concentrating on technology, engineering, that now we are getting back like to human nature. All right, so in which is very important not only to to know how to add, how to use a computer, but also to say good morning, how to solve problems, uh, how to deal with frustration, for example. All right, so those those are like the changes. You no, know? we are getting back to 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 that human side, if you want to use those expressions. So uh, some people refer to them as soft skills, and no matter how how you mention them, the point is how we relate that to being employable and and this is the next move we are going to do if we are talking about developing those skills being creative collaborative communicating and so on uh how is it going to be used or applied in the following 10 years so that by the 2030 we are okay that we are you know perfect in this new society being uh, professional but also having some uh, a good relationship with other people and so on so what we did is that we have now a framework that it says that we have four areas and those four areas is what we construct or build the employability framework those four areas are core academic competencies occupational competencies personal and social capabilities and career knowledge all right, so it means that if we want to be employable, we need to develop those four competencies. All right, so let us begin by academic competencies. Any person wants to open the mic and say what you think academic competencies is, or maybe you want to write in the chat. Or occupational, just make sure that you write what you think. Carlo Grenau says that knowing about your discipline, oh, he's asking, I'm sorry, is if, if that refers about knowing about your discipline. 
Okay, uh, uh, someone wants to say if it is about the discipline, which one do you think is that one? A ca core academic, occupational, personal, or career knowledge? Which one do you think about knowing the discipline it is? Core academic, says Carlo Granados, and then Cousin Restrepo says that being a specialist on a field. Mm -hmm. I know, so she says... Uh, just to, we're going to see what it is, but being specialized in the field, that's what Carlos was saying, but they are not core academic. They are occupational, okay? Everything related to your field is occupational, all right? So how about core, personal? What do you think? What do you think the core academic competencies are? Any guess? Udit says that core academic might be connected to high order skills. Mm. Yes, who did it could be, but remember that anyways, we will be developing those high order thinking or the hots and lots during all the um, the framework of 21st century, no? So that is something that is embedded in 21st century. All right, no problem. That's why we are here in this webinar. This is what it says. It's well, now it, the, 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 the chat started to run. So some people wrote like uh, core academic learning, academic institutions, specific new productive knowledge, cultural competence, saber hacer, human being devoted, knowledgeable, sensitive, communicative analyst, um, having, having enough abilities and knowledge, learning to learn, uh, knowing your field of expertise, uh, cognitive skills. Uh, leadership, oh, how to right. use your knowledge, <laughs> all okay. those. That is great. But you see, we moved in, in a little bit forward. The core academic competencies are this knowledge that we get with literacy and numeracy, like uh, in, the, in the school when we're learning how to read, how to write, how to deal with numbers and so on, okay? So that is that knowledge, okay? All the digital fluency, you know that in the, right now, even some kids study robotics or some schools do have a STEM curriculum, all right? So that it's included in there. It's what it's basic, okay? Like when, when you say in Spanish, bueno, mijito, usted ya sabe leer y escribir. Usted sabe sumar, okay? That's like the basic thing that you need, all right? And occupational, as I was saying before, and, and Carlo, who did mention, is related to the field. It's the skill related to a specific job. In other words, if you study to be a nurse, you need a specific knowledge. That is your occupational competence. Okay, if you want to be an engineer, you study some specific or skill related to that specific job. Okay, and what most of you are mentioning right now, like leadership and um, everything that you mentioned or that I was reading is more related to this, personal and social capabilities, okay? You see, you actually mentioned many of these, like autonomy, social responsibility, leadership, collaboration, everything related to those 21st century skills or soft skills or you list them, all right? And finally, this carrying knowledge and transition skills is like, the, everything is related to lifelong learning, but this one, I love this one because not many universities and not many schools prepare students for this, which is uh, how you showcase your skills and qualifications, how you develop your presence, how you, for example, how you prepare yourself to do an interview, how you give value to what you do in your classroom. And I take this opportunity to thank ASOCOPY because this year and I invite teachers right now to send proposals. You open like this uh, presentaciones de, profe de uh, school teachers, okay? This is very important because there are many things that happens in the classroom and teachers don't share, all right? So we need to showcase what we're doing, like learn how, to, uh, in Spanish we say, como vendernos, okay? And it includes everything or your, all your achievements, even how you talk to your directors or even how to prepare for an interview. And this is career knowledge and transition skills, all right? So how are we going to be employable in the future? Keeping in mind that robots are not going to take our jobs, that so we have been thinking about this for many years, like the example of the alarm clock or, or the virtual teachers, as some of you mentioned before. Everything is just changing. Some of the jobs will disappear, but to be employable, we need to develop some competencies, some skills. Not only uh, social skills, soft skills, but many other skills like these ones, okay? So now, what do you think 
what happens with English? Because we have been talking about English. Uh, many people talk about, oh, las competencias comunicativas in English. You need to be B1, you need to be B2, teachers need to be certified. Uh, if you study at university to be an engineer, you need to, to show proof of, of your English. So what happens with English? Any idea? Please open your microphone. No, no one? Something in the chat? Andrea, Andrea, says, Andrea says that uh, English belongs to the core academic competences. Uh, Santiago says that it is transversal. And Adriana says that, um, no, Adriana, I just like uh, wrote a comment before. He says, uh, Carlos, <laughs> as in life, languages evolve. And Carlos Granado says, it helps to communicate with people from other places when we are in teams. Nora Choperena says, all of them. And Adriana says, it belongs to all. Camila Perez says, all of them. Correct. That's it, guys. It's, it goes across, all of them. English is everywhere. All right. It's not like, you know, many years ago, it was like, oh, no, uh, English is only for uh, bilingual schools or for certain group of people. Then with bilingual programs, only certain group of schools. Now universities, not, no, now English is for all of them. It goes all over the place. All right. That is why we are thinking if we want to be employable, so we not only need to develop this, but develop a language, like in our case, English. All right, so we, uh, we have some information here, like LinkedIn, they were saying like what, um, what companies were asking or what attributes were they looking, you know, or actually last week the British embassy was asking that what they needed to open businesses in Colombia and so on. And one of the things is, of course, the fluency in English, uh, some people think about uh, proficiency in English and so on, okay? Uh, actually, uh, um, being proficient in English is very important, not only in terms of job, but you all know, even in academic production, no? And again, if you want to publish or you have articles, you can read how from uh, as a copy and the articles are going to be in English, okay? Uh, this other screen taken from 24 Economic Conditions, look, it says writing in English, of course, depending on, on the type of job to be performed, different proficiency, that that is one of the things that depending on how you are studying or what you need to study for, you are going to develop different skills, no? So in that case, if we look at each one of them, how English is immersed or embedded in each one of these competencies or skills, we can say that for core academic competencies is English as a foreign language, what you study in a school, all right? If we think about occupational competencies is ESP or general business English, or if you think of personal social capabilities, everything that we do with soft skills or the 21st century skills. And if you think about career knowledge and transitional skills, the example is for, ex the, for example, writing a curriculum vita or, or preparing for an interview in English, all right? So English language is all over the skills that are going to make employable in the future. And actually, it's true, no? Because if we look at the opportunities with these tech sometimes, or the, even the companies, many people don't have or cannot grow in the company because of the lack of, of the English, no? So how can we move that into our classrooms or into our teaching practice? One of the options is, first of all, uh, you know that the Common European Framework was, um, had some changes, and... Um, Anyways, it's focus on general English and not too much reference to work and study because that's what the Common European Framework did, no? Focusing on that social English. So what we did is that right now, you, when you analyze the Common European Framework, you say, okay, let's imagine that um, Jaira Yala is a student who is A2 and Monica Rodriguez Bonses is A2. If we think, and Jair is A2 finishing, and he's closest to a B1, and Monica is just beginning, the performance is gonna be absolutely different, all right? Even if the Common European Framework says that we both are A2. 
our performance is different. So what we did and is that we create something that is called the global scale of English. So what happens with the global scale of English? The global scale of English is going to give you a 10 point system, all right, from 10 to 90, that is going to tell you how you are performing in each one of the levels of the Common European Framework. That is open to the public, no matter what you are using. You can be using Oxford, Cambridge, Person. You can be teaching business English, general English. You can be using your own materials. It doesn't matter. The most important is that you have clear idea what, of what the learning outcomes are, all right? So you go, you can visit English.com and you see the global scale of English. And from there, just as the Common European Framework does, you have all those learning outcomes, okay? So now you have this specific, what's, what people can do, all right? So we're going to move that now into the Common European Framework and global scale of English. So for example, you have global scale of English for that professional English. So for the speaking, for example, you say, uh, the student can make a complaint, all right? So you are gonna see what the student can do. These are examples, okay? It shows some core academic competencies. But if you say, for example, can carry out a work-related phone conversation using polite fixed expressions, this is more related to occupational competencies. Or if you say can give information in a job interview about job history that is more related to career knowledge. Okay? So what I'm trying to say here, my dear teachers, is that you can use that common European framework, enrich it with this global scale of English, and then you make those uh, learning objectives more specific and more realistic to what you, the student, have to do. Okay, so what are you going to do? This is for free. You don't have to pay for any of this, or, right? So you go there, you select the type of learning you are using. In this case, it's professional English, okay? You select the common European framework level you are studying. Let's say you are teaching engineering or engineers at university and they are A2. And then you select the skill you want to work. You can choose all the four language skills or you just select writing or reading or listening. And then, you have all the learning objectives, all the learning outcomes, what your student should be able to do. What is the idea? That if we are using English, if we are preparing our students in those four competencies, we need to make sure that in the classroom, we give opportunities for them to put into practice those skills. Okay, so let us move on. Like in here, uh, the European Commission said, for example, that for business skills, these are some of the actions that people do. Like, for example, presenting company products or services, that is the third one. Or the first one, attending business meetings. That's something that happens. So this is common. Attending business meetings. That is one of the common words that we heard. So when we talk about meetings and we think what a student can do in a meeting, and we take the common European framework, can do statements, or global scale of English, can do statements, and we translate that into our language learning, you may have a list of learning objectives. So I invite you, and this is very interesting when we do that in different countries, it's very interesting, the perceptions. Okay, I want you to look at, li at this list of learning objectives, and I want you to organize them from the easiest or the most basic to the most difficult one. Okay, number them. Which one is the easiest, the most difficult? And in the chat, write the numbers. For example, if you say, no, the basic one is number two, then it's four, then it's one and five, just organize them. Take some minutes and look. And organize them. Write your answers in the chat, please. Okay, are we getting some answers? I not necessary to read the answers, but are we getting some answers? No, not yet. I guess we all are reading the, the prompts. Perfect. So look, think which one do you think goes first? We have five, three, four, one, two, two, three, oh. four, five, one. Five, one, two, four, three. Okay, don't worry, let me show the answers. 
three five one two four five four one two three one five two four three. Um, <laughs> this is so nice because it shows everyone how has a different one. Everyone Correct. has a different one. And you can do this exercise with a, with any example of <laughs> can't be statements from the Marco Comun or the Global Scale of English. Look how they are organized and tell me if someone got it right. Uh, well, I, ha or, I am checking them out and there are only two that <laughs> are equal. The See? ones that were uh, written by Fabio and Sandra Garcia are equal. And, and they have did they four, start three, with five, number four? Yes, okay. four, four, three, five, two, one is what they wrote. Okay. And what you're mm -hmm. offering here is four, two, five, one, three. Correct. So uh, the ones the that one. you have are different from the ones that we received in the chat. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, believe it or not, this happens it usually happens in the classrooms no and that is why when teachers assign an activity uh, sometimes the activity or the task is above level or below level you know so it's very important to have a clear idea of what the learning objective is and what we are, should expect the student to do like in this case some of you say that the first one was number five you know, so can invite others into discussion during a teleconference by asking for questions, but this is actually a B2 uh, learning outcome, learning objective. You see, it changes a lot. It's, it's, it, this is very interesting. So that is why it's very important to use tools like this global scale of English to make sure that you have these points and how it changed from one level to another, no? Because look, for example, four and two. They are B1, one is B1, B1 plus, and the difference is seven points. And of course, from one grade or from a level to another, the students may increase two points, but it means a lot, all right? So it's very important to identify those learning objectives and align them to these core competencies so that we are truly preparing our students to use the language that they need, okay? The example that I'm giving today applies for ESP, no? For um, English for specific purposes. But you can actually do it for your general English class. Why? Because you are not only developing those competencies in your ESP classes. You can start developing those competencies even from preschool, primary, and secondary school, all right? So let us move on. How can we align those to the language skills? So in here, I, uh, I have uh, one example. Like if, if you look at one of the jobs, of course, very practical. You look, healthcare practitioners, you can see which is the practitioner. In this example, there is specific information that this person, or like a nurse, a registered nurse, is required to do. Then you visit the global scale of English. You have your learning outcomes, your learning objectives aligned to what the registered nurse should do, okay? This is practical, this is what I show you, you can do and you just Google and you search that. But how about, this is exactly the same situation. Oh, I don't know what happened, okay. But what happens, wait a minute, what's going on in here? What happens when we are in any general English class? We can also develop that and especially make emphasis on those skills, the personal and social capabilities. The belief or what we suggest is that by, you know, making a little bit of emphasis on these personal and social capabilities in the English class, we may target the other language skills. How is that? Very practical. Let us look at this. Uh, any English course that you use, okay, may target these soft skills like critical thinking, creativity, communication, collaboration, self-management, leadership, and social responsibility. These are some examples, okay? And then we look how it is seen in the textbook. And again, no matter which textbook you use, the idea is to identify this. Like for example, critical thinking, giving opinions, influences, negotiating, or problem solving. Can you do that in your classroom? Of course you can, all right? Creativity, every time that you ask to write stories or create different scenarios. 
communication every time that you ask for speaking, writing, listening, you know? Collaboration. This is very important, no? And, the, and I think that this is one of, this has been one of the major challenges in this new way of teaching by using a technology or education mediated by technology, no? How to make them work in collaboration, you know? Be going beyond a breakout room. That's what I mean, no? How can we make them learn? Collaborate. Self-management. Leadership. Of course, we can have leaders in our groups. We can develop that in our classes. Social responsibility. When we talk, when we target different topics, and this is very important, and, 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 and I know that, for example, Universidad Eafit, they are making a lot of emphasis this, applying the philosophy of Paulo Freire, in which they now ask all the students to reflect on the topic and then think how the society, the social reality can change. So they have the English textbook or any topic, and they, they think how we can influence our own community, how can we work on our own society. And this is a perfect example of social responsibility. So if there is someone from the AFIT, congratulations, because they love how they are doing that, all right? So we can do this, being conscious on how we develop all those skills in the classroom, and then, we go and it's going to be like um, across all the other competences. Just to give you one example. Students work in the small groups and share their experiences and advice. Then they agree on two of the best pieces of advice. Monitor and make notes on students' language use for later feedback. In the group discussion, did you? Okay, here there is a key word on how to make sure sure that students are using language while developing other skills and the key word is feedback okay providing effective feedback looking at how students are interacting okay relating to their own experiences just by doing a simple task like this one is going to provide a whole different view of their own reality while developing all the language skills making emphasis on 21st century Even simple activities like taking turns, like for example, today I ask you, uh, you can open your microphone to give your opinion or use the chat to give your opinion or Jair is going to be reading some of the comments. That is a different way of interaction, okay, in which we see evidence of some skill that we are developing in the class, all right? Maybe some participants wanted to talk, but they were afraid of opening the microphone, you see? Um, when someone does it, that person is moving forward in developing other soft skills. Just to show you one example, using or modeling what we are doing right here, right now in this webinar given by Asokopi, okay? The way we ask others for their opinions, okay? Like how we react, for example, when others give opinions. Another example, and here I may have asked, what do you think about core competences are? The, the, the interlocutor may act in different ways, but since we are developing other skills, okay, or, or those future skills, we need to be conscious of what type of feedback we provide and how we move on on developing concepts, and of course, developing other areas. In our case, we are developing concepts related to our field of study. You see? So, this is so nice. I, I love this. Okay? So what the research says, all the research on future of skills, the one I ask you also to, to search, says that soft skills need to be explicitly taught. You cannot assume they will simply be picked up along the way. It says that it's particularly true for students from disadvantaged or lower socioeconomic background who may not have soft skills modeled by their family or peers. That is why it's very important to be modeled by teachers. Of course, in some families, for example, they don't respect terms for speaking or they are too loud when speaking or they constantly interrupt, just to give you an example. So we need to teach our students how to do it, okay? Uh, or not to do it, not to interrupt, all right? So we need to be explicit about teaching those skills. And why? Because in the future, when interacting in their companies or in their work, they will have to interact with others and put that into practice, okay? 
Um, it says in here, that's what the research says, that soft skills are taught most effectively within the context of other teaching, other subject areas. But we have seen in here, and anyways in the English class, how by just having a group work activity or preparing a conversation, how they can develop those skills, okay? Um, feedback is very important. I already mentioned that. That, okay, uh, of course, in effective feedback, always providing what was done well and any opportunity for improvement. Um, critical thinking, very important, especially when questioning opinions, giving answers, or making decisions. Okay, uh, if we promote that, and uh, it's like my classroom uh, mistakes are welcome, opinions are welcome, and no matter what we create that friendly environment is very important because the students are going to be able to express themselves and in that way we can put into practice more things, all right? Uh, and that's what this finding sex, and, and again, this is not new, you see, it's what we have been doing, it's just that it's giving more, it's like shaping what is happening in the classroom, making us a little bit more aware of what we are doing. Okay, like how to interrupt in class. I don't know if, when, if it happened to you, but it happened to me. I, I was teaching a class and uh, for example, in the platform that we were using uh, for giving our classes, I could not even use breakout rooms. And then of course now we can, <laughs> but at that time we couldn't. And it was like, okay guys, now you have five minutes, organize yourself. And I had to create like those rules of how my teachers had to interact in their classroom. All right, so what happened? That created a sense of collaboration, and it was very important, and those teachers were like, no, Monica, we understand, and this is what we are facing even with our students. So this reality is not only for our classes, it's everywhere, how we interact, okay? Um, as I was saying, different skills, meaning not only the 21st century skills, but also all the core competencies. So for example, if you are teaching at university level, and one of the competencies has you to be prepared to do an interview or how you are going to post your information on social media, we need to raise awareness on this and tell the students how they can practice and how can you do it. Of course, you can use your course book, no matter which one you use, but also you can create those type of activities in which they face that real life interaction. At the end of the day, we are preparing them for life, no? Another important aspect is self-evaluation and peer evaluation. Sometimes uh, we, let's say in core academic, in, uh, when we're teaching reading, writing, um, digital literacy, uh, we need to be aware that sometimes everything is new for teachers, for the students. So we need to make sure that there is a moment for self-evaluation and peer evaluation and a moment like, you know, like to digest the information. <laughs> because sometimes we take it for granted. I'm not generalizing, I'm just saying in some cases. So having said that, and to wrap up, we need to think that to make us employable is not only a matter of knowing English, because as we have seen, this is all over the line, across the lines. We need to develop other competencies, like core academic, occupational competencies, per, uh, personal and social competencies, all right? So that we integrate all of them, and at the end of the day, we have people that not only know about the field, you know, that they not only know about an area, that they not only know English, but that they also are uh, leaders, that they know how to interact with others, and most important, that they know how to, uh, como decimos en español, venderse, how they can make visible what they are doing, all right? So that is the invitation, not only focus on, on, on teaching the language per se, but involve other core skills so that we prepare for the future, because it's changing. And as I said at the beginning, in 10 years, many of the jobs that today exist are not going to exist. For sure, teachers, but not many more jobs, okay? So basically, that's, that's it. Jair, I don't know if there are any questions, because I know we are short of time. We are um, doing good. Uh, we still have five more minutes uh, for mm -hmm. questions. Um, there are various uh, comments here in the chat, and that is uh, very interesting because actually uh, 
um, everyone is is contributing here to the to the conversation. So it's it's very important here, just like uh, uh, okay, to to I, I, to. And I don't know if you already have access to the chat. Yeah, I, I decided to close that, and yeah. now we'll have it. Uh huh. Yes, someone, uh, Carlos says, it's important, not English, but we use the language for, that is true. And that is why the reflection today, more than, that's why I told you, more than coming here and teaching something is to make this reflection that when we talk about uh, soft skills, this is not new, I've been dealing with that. And it's not only about learning the language, but why we need it for. And again, I don't want you to think, oh, Monica is coming here and telling us that we need to belong to the workforce and we are learning to be part. No, no, no. It's just that understanding that we are not only one part, but we are also human, <laughs> you know? And we are, yeah, we are a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what Judith said. It's like a holistic approach, not seeing parts, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct, it's what the language is used for. Yes, Kusan. John, uh, can we have memories of this presentation? It's gonna be in YouTube, yes. Thank you, thank you for this. Yeah, that's it. this is what the objective today was, like the reflection and then for you guys to have the free tool. Remember, you can get Global Scale of English and that is for free and you can use that for any subject. Not only, today I show the example for English for a specific purposes, why? Because I have seen, I have seen teachers, especially at university level, that they say, Monica, es que estoy enseñando el inglés a los de ingeniería y que yo quisiera que ellos lo utilizaran más para su trabajo. You can do it. Go visit there and get those learning objectives and plan a couple of lessons targeting those learning objectives, okay? Jennifer says, teaching the cultural comments as well. Sometimes we do focus on teaching. Uh -huh. Remember that when we think of intercultural competences, it also includes many of these 21st century skills, no? open to communication, collaboration, uh, culture, all right? And, uh, and remember that even is not only intercultural that we are talking about now, Ooh, many, many aspects in terms of culture. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you guys. I think there is no no more comments. I don't know if there is any other question. We have two minutes. Someone who wants to open the microphone and say something or we are well, okay. Thank you guys. Thank you for the, all the Carlos Gordillo comments. has his hand. Okay. Uh, hi, do you listen to me? Yes. Yes, perfect. Oh, oh, hi, Jay. Hey, okay, Juan Carlos. Long hello. time no How are hear you? from you. Good, very yeah. good. Thank you. Oh, well, no, first of all, uh, thanks to us, Kopi, Jair, and, and Monica for the, for the presentation. It was awesome. Uh, I just want to highlight something that, that you said about uh, being employable, right? And it's, it's also the thing that you should, we, we should think, uh, we should go beyond that, that is being self-unemployable, right? Because, uh, well, for example, where, where I live now, with the trend is like many people, uh, many teachers are like, start creating uh, their own business, online teaching. It's something that, that is happening. So maybe I would like to highlight those competences that, that's gonna help us not just to be like attractive for, for a company, for a school or something. Also as well that we can start to create our, our, our teaching business online. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is very important what you say, and, and that's why I invite you to Google the future of skills research and, and, and do what I did, the example, the screen that I showed you with the jobs, because for example, right now, one of the skills that is being asked from teachers is to be data analysts. Analysts? Okay. <laughs> that's what they need to do. It means you get information about what you do with that information. So imagine in your context, in your reality, those teachers who are creating or opening their new business, they also need to create those skills, you know, uh, or learning strategies, how to manage learning strategies. So I'm not saying that we don't have that now, but those are the skills that we must develop, all right? So to be successful, is possible and we all we all could open you know our business and have the english classes and so on but the point is how we're going to stay on time when all of this happens all the different interactions what do we need and that's the reflection okay so and that's one of the skills and definitely they need it mm -hmm. 
The other part is here what Ingrid Joanna is saying and Yvonne, no? that sometimes we forget that we are humans. And that is why this type of interaction nos ha dado durísimo a muchos, you know? Because we, are, we forgot it because of the daily routine. And being human is so, something as simple as how to say good morning, uh, how to deal with frustration, how to take turns in a conversation, you know? Simple details that make us better people and we need to translate that into our classroom and another invitation is how we can do that in these virtual environments it's not only teaching concepts i always say saber el verbo to be o saberlo de la célula yo lo googleo but how i apply that and how i interact how is that is useful for my life that's what the secret is otherwise una pérdida de tiempo it's my opinion okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so well, you have heard um, the result of this uh, research, very interesting. And once again, every single webinar we have developed is interconnected with the previous ones. And of course, that is also interconnected with the upcoming ones. So um, uh, thank you very much for attending. Uh, thank you very much, Monica, for presenting this interesting topic. Um, um, I, of course, thank you very much for your participation in the in the chat. Uh, it was very interesting topic, something to start reflecting upon. Um, and it, it has various, various viewpoints. So these are really interesting um, opinions and mm -hmm. facts that actually uh, provide food for thought for us in our profession. <laughs> and of course, as you said, as you called your, your session, is something to think about the future. All right, good. Um, now, thank you guys. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you very much, Monica. So uh, hopefully we could, we could get to see you all, um, including um, the previous presenters. I saw here connected Carolina, I saw Adriana, um, and uh, uh, I think uh, the other ones, Juan Carlos, I think I saw him as well. The previous presenters, Jose Aldemar was here as well. So um, we are just like a growing all together. So uh, one of the uh, participants today who was really active in the chat was Carlo Granados our president. So he's going to have um, the floor for next session. So uh, please look for his information in the website. And starting off uh, today, right now, we're going to start um, using the, 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 the social networks to promote his webinar, which is going to be next uh, Thursday. Once again, five in the afternoon. Don't miss it out. Um, once again, I just... Um, said who the presenter is but i didn't say what the topic is so please find it <laughs> oh so camila already uh, shared the 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 topic in the chat uh, so please look for the information spread the word um the next um the next webinar is going to be by carlo granados same time same place so i uh, will see you guys next week thank you very much um so there is a question. We're still waiting for the webinar about HyperDoc, please. Last uh, session, Caro talked a lot about that. So if you want to please check out um, a little bit um, her video, which is also in the um, YouTube channel of Asocopy. So please um, uh, check it out and let us know if you could have like a further questions. I am sure that if you ask Caro, she would be more than pleased to help you out with that information. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, have a wonderful rest of the day. Please take care of yourselves. I will see you next Thursday. Have a good afternoon. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you all.